Well, aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. And it is a new week. It is Tuesday, the 10th day of July. I am very pleased to be joining you today on this live stream. It feels like it's been a long time, and it probably has been since uh, last week I did not uh, was not able to come on live to serve you on Tuesday. I did come in on Thursday, though, and it's very powerful wisdom and blessings on that day. But today, I was guided to offer wisdom, teaching some blessings on a shurfu. What is a shurfu? How can they serve you? And how do you communicate with them? And uh, for those of you that saw the Facebook post, you might have seen um, the posting from uh, Panda, um, you know, with his shifu. And so I thought that was kind of cute because when I looked up shurfu on the Google under images, that was literally the only image they had. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, most people, if they've heard of shurfu at all, it would be probably because of uh, the panda movies. So hopefully there will be a value in this for you today. I am going to uh, real quickly here make a post on my internal chat groups. Um, so that they know I am live. And actually, I'm going to ask uh, Kristen. Kristen's my right hand. If she would mind doing that, let them know that I'm live on Facebook. And I'm talking about Sherfus today. I've got a lot of students, uh, probably about 100 of them, that uh, they kind of scatter over time. And they'd like to know when I go live. So this is an opportunity for them. So welcome, Prin uh, Princess Lee. Welcome, Elizabeth Marie. Welcome also, Robert Dosa. Welcome, Divjot. <clears throat> and welcome, Shelly Maritza Wilburn. Uh, welcome also to uh, Kristen Rojas. Uh, anyone else whose name I can't see? Looks like a Jennifer. So, uh, first names that come in uh, on, on the screen that I see, Facebook actually blurs them out. It's really hard to see. And welcome, Rochelle. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. So today will be actually very powerful. Um, I might even do a flow or two from Shurfus so you can kind of get an idea of their power and their significance. Um, I first learned about Shurfus from Master Shah uh, in one of his major events. And I'll give you some insight on that a little bit later as I get into the teaching. Um, so let us go ahead and welcome Aspasia. Let's go ahead and get start connecting here for all those that are just tuning in for the first time. I have to wet my whistle here. I've got a little bit of throat clearing to occur. <clears throat> so I hope you had a good weekend. I hope it was powerful and filled with love and light. I just completed a several practice sessions this morning with students. So my heart center is wide open after those practice sessions. Welcome, Christine. Welcome also, Anne-Marie. So let us go ahead and connect while Facebook is gathering some more souls. We'll place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. Let me adjust my camera a little bit. There we go. And we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. The right hand remains pointed towards heaven. <clears throat> let us fully connect. And I will call in the beings of light. Dear our beloved divine creator, all layers of the divine to Tao, the source. There are mother and father shurfus from this lifetime to all lifetimes. Our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. I love you, honor you, appreciate you. Humbly ask for your presence at this time to offer your service to each and every one of us that join. Please be present in whatever way is most appropriate. To the soul of all of the servants of the light side, including masters and ascendant masters, gurus, lamas, sifu, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas. Angels, healing angels, archangels, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Amitofu, beloved Namo Kwanchuryan Pusa, Dasher Jir Pusa, Happy Buddha, Medicine Buddha, Ganesha, uh, dear Krishna, dear Vishnu, dear all of those serving the planet of the light side, we love you, we honor you, respect you, we invite you to please be present to serve in whatever way is most appropriate. These names that I'm mentioning are all shurfus. These are examples. Dear the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, 
We love you and we appreciate you. We ask for your presence at this time. And as we chant love, peace, and harmony to connect heart to heart, soul to soul, we invite all souls in all universes to please come at this time <clears throat> to chant with us and to serve unconditionally. For anybody new that is tuning in, everybody so far is not new, but for anybody that stumbles across this live stream, uh, I will be chanting a mantra called Love, Peace, and Harmony. This is in, listed in over 40 languages, and it is a service-based mantra. It is a healing mantra, and it gathers hearts and souls into oneness. So let us chant together. One round. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lu. La li lu la, lu la ha li lu la, lu la ha li lu la. Wo ai wo xian er ling, wo ai ran man li, rong ling rong er mu shi shang. I love my heart and soul. I love all <coughs> humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me see if I can make some adjustments here, put myself a little more center. Very good. <clears throat> okay, so let's see who else has joined us. Welcome, Aspasia. Welcome, Merritt. Welcome also to. Uh, Kim Morrison, welcome Carol Sasko. Aloha Christine Marie, welcome CJ. Aloha Robert Dosa, Deborah Anderson. And welcome also to Monica, welcome to Merritt. <coughs> and let's see, welcome also to Nathan Kane and Rosetta. Aloha. Nathan asks, can anyone tell me about my spirit guides? Well, you might get some value out of today. I do individual soul readings that may be of value for you if you want to set up private session. Um, but let's go ahead and embark in this subject matter. What are Shurfus? How do they serve you? And how can you communicate directly with them? Actually, I, I uh, was asked to do this by a student who had come across me on YouTube. Kristen has been helping me a lot, posting a lot of the Facebook. I've been doing Facebook for two years now, and they're all always recorded. But um, the ability to <clears throat> get them in all the different venues out there is very difficult because you have to download them off Facebook and put them up onto YouTube, and it just takes time. Anyway, she's been helping a lot, and that's been bringing additional visibility. And one of the uh, students there asked um, about this subject matter. So I said, okay, I haven't taught about this in a long time. It will be a good one to touch on. By the way, uh, if you would each hit your share button and let other people know about this live stream, that would be great. I'm sure that more than you would enjoy uh, receiving this wisdom. So thank you for sharing. Welcome also to Becky Lafave. So the first thing is, what is a shurfu? Well, the word shurfu means teacher. Specifically, teacher for your spiritual journey and your spiritual path. Um, if, you know, the, like the word master, like the name Master Paul, um, some people, they get caught up in their head, you know, who is this person to be calling themselves a master, right? But um, it's actually relatively common for somebody to call the Shurfu. If somebody wanted to call me Shurfu Paul, that would be fine too. If somebody were going to call me Paul, that would be fine. I really have zero attachment to the verbiage in front of it. What is a Shurfu? It is a spiritual teacher. Now, there are different levels of spiritual teachers, and the ones that specifically I'm referring to today are the ones that are most, well, sometimes I guess they can be in the physical, but generally speaking, the ones I'm referring to today are in the non-physical. In other words, they're spirit masters. 
<clears throat> they are masters that have already ascended. They are masters that are uh, have figured out this third dimensional experience and uh, return to assist us that have not figured it out. That's what I'm referring to as a shurfu. Now, some people are wondering, even without saying anything, um, well, what's the difference between a shurfu and a spirit guide? What's the difference between a spirit guide and my heaven's team? It's kind of like slicing up uh, uh, straws and saying, what's the difference in the straw pieces? They're all spiritual beings that have come to serve. A shurfu uh, specifically can be a dedicated spiritual being that is dedicated to serve you specifically. That's quite a bit different than um, just any spirit being that may have a desire to serve. So there is a difference in the difference between Shurfu's spirit beings and your heavens team. So I'm going to spend a minute on those individually, and then I'll go more into Shurfu. Um, Christina, welcome. Aloha, welcome. Colleen, welcome also to uh, Kim Drewberry. Anyone else whose name I mentioned, welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for hitting the share button. <clears throat> so Heaven's Teams, we all have Heaven's Teams. People have asked me who's on my Heaven's Team, how many are on my Heaven's Team. Um, it does vary. And, uh, you know, my third eye, although it flickers, and I'm, I'm showing images here and there, I don't get to see moving pictures like some people. Uh, also, even if I did see moving pictures, if I asked to see your Heaven's Team, it's unlikely they would all show up. Um, simply because it has to do with hierarchy. It has to do with... Um, my soul standing and 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 their willingness to show themselves to me you know who is this person and who is their soul standing should i show myself to them this is this is the different layers you might have for example jesus as one of your sure who's on your heaven's team doesn't mean jesus will show himself um what really matters is for you to know that every single one of us do have a heaven's team and uh from the 30 plus years of, of training under multiple masters, enlightened beings, etc. What I've come to gather, as well as listening to teachers reading their books, is that the heavens teams that we have can actually vary in their size, and that the souls that come come and go, uh, depending on the um, conditions that are coming up in your life uh, that your soul is guiding. Because although there is some aspects of destiny occurring. Our soul does have an intention. Um, our soul is steering our life in the best way that it can. We do have individual choice here with, with our personality ego. And there are times when we make uh, big, big, big mistakes. And it takes our soul off its intended journey. <clears throat> so yes, there are such things as destiny, but they can be altered by our ego and our personality. Our heaven's team is there to kind of act like bumpers. Um, you ever seen uh, the bowling alleys? And they have the little air bumpers down the middle. <clears throat> Think of your heaven's team and your soul as those bumpers. The bowling alley is your path that your soul wants you to stay on. And you might go a little bit off here and they go, thunk, 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 they knock you back this way and thunk, 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 they knock you back the other way. And sometimes the knocking is gentle and sometimes it's, it's, it's significant. <clears throat> What's a gentle knocking? A gentle knocking is when books fall off the shelf onto your head. What's a big knock? That's when you have uh, a significant, um, major, major life-changing experience, like a car accident or, or, or something major like that, that makes you stop in your tracks and reevaluate your life. So these are brought to us <clears throat> very commonly by either our karma or they're brought to us by our own soul because it's trying to get you back in alignment. Um, so our heavens teams are there to support us in that process. Sometimes they give us information through um, direct messages. Sometimes we get it through songs, sometimes through books, sometimes through friends, sometimes through videos like this. Uh, but our heavens team uh, is constantly communicating with us to help us. Uh, <laughs> constantly is the key word. So why is it that we can't hear them? Well, because our channels are not open enough. So let me acknowledge who else has joined us. Welcome, Johannes. Welcome also to Linda Iloba. Welcome, Victor Bigno. Aloha, Erica. And welcome also to Danta. Thank you all for joining. And thank you for hitting the share button. 
So now that you know a Heavens team, a little more information before we move into Sherfus, our Heavens team changes. Who typically can be can be on our Heavens team? <clears throat> our ancestors can be on our Heavens team. Grandmas, grandpas, great grandmas, great grandpas, um, angels. We can have uh, archangels on our Heavens team. We can have uh, saints and beings, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, uh, those from any belief system can be on our heavens team there's typically a leader for your heavens team uh, and they help to guide along with your soul the heavens team can change three four five ten twenty a hundred and uh, the amount will change according to the processes you're going through and your needs um, some might come in for age from age seven to fourteen you had a certain person there from age seven to fourteen and after they helped you achieve what needed to be done during that time they go back and they go serve others so that's an example of a heavens team spirit guides can definitely fall into that same category <clears throat> but very often they're not a part of your team necessarily they could be uh, and this is just my understanding and interpretation it doesn't mean it's correct uh, but my understanding from these years of, of learning and wisdom is that spirit guides are there to also nudge you here and there um, but we have to be a bit more careful with our spirit guides because it's been my uh, wisdom-based experience and personal-based experience and with time much deeper understandings that we can be manipulated we can be uh, steered in incorrect directions if we are impure what do I mean by that well, what if you have a spiritual life and intention, but you also drink a lot, or you happen to do a lot of recreational drugs? Um, not against either of those. Have enjoyed those, still enjoy them occasionally. Don't do the recreational drug thing anymore, but I had my share of it. And what happens is when we are in those open states, when we're in those states of uh, impure alignment, then we can be susceptible to receiving messages that are also impure. So spirit guides don't always come in the form of purity. And so as an individual, we have to be uh, responsible for our purity in order to ensure that we are receiving pure messages from so-called spirit guides. Uh, many of them do have benevolent interests. Some of them do not. <clears throat> My teacher, Master Shah, has, has given some very clear guidelines how to discern the difference. And very simply, we can discern the difference by measuring with our heart the purity of the message. Is this message uplifting? Is this message loving? Is this message benefiting me and my soul journey? Is this message supporting my ego? Oh, you're great. You're one of the best. Don't worry. You're awesome. You can do it. Um, maybe, maybe that's a pure message. But try to read between the lines if it's supporting your ego, making you better than others. Um, this is some examples of what's called false messages. So when we get into spirit guides, you want to be careful with that range that can occur depending on your level of purity. Okay. Welcome also Delma. Welcome Yolanda. Uh, welcome um, to Jack Poulton. <clears throat> Shurfus, the subject matter of today. A Shurfu is a dedicated teacher, a teacher dedicated to your soul journey. When I do my private classes, I have a class right now. I highly recommend everyone join. You can get three months worth of direct teachings for only um, $100. And what am I doing during this? I'm working with the wisdom directly out of Master Shah books. I'm going into depth with very small categories. I go into deep teachings on each small category, teaching you how to heal yourself, how to clear blockages in your relationships, your finances, and your health, and more. Uh, that's an example of working with a Shurfu, a direct teacher. This subject matter is about our spiritual teachers uh, off planet, off world, um, heavenly beings that are a dedicated teacher to you. Now, that could be, for some of you, um, a Buddha. It could be Jesus. It could be Mother Mary. It could be Vishnu. It could be Krishna. It could be Ganesha. It could be Mohammed. 
It could be many, many others whose names you do not know but are dedicated teachers. Now, my first Shurfu, I'll tell you a little bit about so that you grasp a little bit more. <clears throat> I was at a retreat with Master Shah about nine and a half years ago. And his first retreat I was ever with this master. And he revealed Shurfus. And um, uh, he had the authority to assign a Shurfu to individuals. That means you had a dedicated teacher from the soul world. And so there was many, many students receiving dedicated teachers. How did they know which person got which teacher, right? Well, one of the things about a very enlightened being, a high-level being, is their spiritual channels are wide open. They can see very clearly. They can hear messages very clearly. Their channels are open. Uh, and so Master Shah had 10 top teachers at that time. And so when somebody received their Shurfu, um, and many people did, they individually went up to the side. The uh, top teachers collectively got together, and they saw images and received who was their Shurfu. And they would see the Shurfu standing over the head of the individual. Okay, you received this Shurfu. Uh, and then they all check with each other, make sure they're in agreement, make sure they can see and hear the same things. Validation. Well, uh, it came to my turn, and I, oh, I'm so excited. Who is my spiritual teacher that's going to be with me and guide me, you know, my life, right? And um, Master Francisco was there, and he said, he said, I see this man, and he's wearing a white robe, and he has this uh, big you know, big, big, big mustache, like a handlebar mustache. And he's Indian, and he's telling me his name is Lah Lahiri, Lahiri. Now, keep in mind, this is an English, this is, this is Master Francisco, right? He's a Mexican man who grew up in California. He has no clue about any of this stuff, uh, especially an Indian guru. And he's seeing the, the, the man, and he's, he's saying, he's telling me his name is Lahiri. And then one of the other people said, well, ask him who his teacher is. And he said, he said, I am the teacher of the teacher of Yogananda. That's what he told somebody else. That's what the spirit being standing above my head told. He said, I am the teacher of the teacher of Yogananda. And so that's what they said to me. I was, okay, so I'm excited, right? And I went up to the side, and there was a woman there, <clears throat> and a very, very um, enlightened uh, person who, who was very, very connected. And she said, she looked at me and she said, oh, and she could see right above my head. She said, Master Lahiri is with you. I said, oh, great. Who is that? I have no idea, right? And she said, Master Lahiri is an amazing soul. You need to go pick up the autobiography of the yogi and read about him. I said, okay, so I'm excited. Let's go find out who this Shurfu is. And I, I never read the autobiography of a yogi. I picked it up. And I'm leafing through it. And all of a sudden, I come across who is Master. They even have a picture of it in the book. And I Google it. And so now I know who this Master is. Why did he come to me? I had to ask for soul readings. Why did this Master come to me? Why did he want to be my teacher? Apparently, I was a student in a previous lifetime. So that's why he came to me. So this is an example of a dedicated teacher. Sometimes we are blessed to know. Sometimes we are not. They had, uh, they had um, some Christian uh, beings of like uh, Master Bernadette, or, or, or I think it, was, um, it wasn't a master. It was like a, like a saint, Saint Bernadette. There was all these saints that nobody had ever heard of. But once they got the names, they looked them up, and historically speaking, and they're like, oh, there they are. So these beings of light, they come to us to serve us on our soul journey. How do they serve us? They are constantly teaching our soul. We're down here on this third dimensional plane, getting our tail kicked, trying to figure out this life, trying to figure out how to operate in life, um, dealing with financial issues, dealing with lack of love issues, dealing with lack of physical touch issues, dealing with, with all kinds of dramas of our physical life. And, and just wondering, you know, why am I suffering so much? Shurfus dedicate their life to assist us to move forward on our soul journey and stop our suffering. Who wants to suffer, right? Raise your hand if you want to suffer, okay? I don't think any hands are going up. 
Sherfus went through suffering. They know how much it sucks. That's why they're a spiritual teacher now. They recognize and they know the nature of the law of the universe, which is you must serve to elevate your soul standing. Not only must you serve, you must serve unconditionally. This morning I was teaching a, uh, a class and we were, soul language was released for all of our students. And uh, today's class was not a teaching as much as a practice. So there was about six of us and we used our soul language to chant for each other, to serve each other. Welcome Amy Huger, welcome Samantha Brooks. And then afterwards I did a flow. And I ask, you know, whoever wants to borrow my mouth, please share the power and significance of this service today. And it was astounding what came through. Jesus came. Jesus borrowed my mouth and Jesus spoke. And I, I, I have to go back and write it down. It was truly profound. Uh, so I'm just paraphrasing at this point what was said uh, because I just, I just can't remember it all. Um, but what was said was something to the effect of, when you serve others, this one person, because we were serving an individual, you are not serving just that individual. You are serving all of those behind the individual that brought the suffering to that individual. When you offer service of chanting for another soul, the reason that soul was suffering is because of their karma. And the souls behind them suffered. Therefore, they were bringing the suffering to that one soul. Karma, right so we were not impacting just that one soul that was the message and the message was that every soul is connected so when we chant for one many souls are released many souls are served we in turn are served because those souls are grateful for the virtue they receive when we are serving we are offering virtue the virtue offsets the spiritual debt the soul that was served and the souls behind them are grateful. They offer virtue to the one who is doing the serving. Jesus then went on to say, again paraphrasing, that he kept using the phrase, do you understand? He would say something and he'd say, do you understand? Go deeper. He would say something else. Do you understand? Go deeper. And in essence, what he kept saying was, do you, do you grasp? that when you offer healing to one, you truly are offering healing to all because it has this reverberation effect that helps self-clear all the way out. And it was a very, very deep teaching to comprehend. That's what our shurfus are here for. That's what our shurfus do. They assist us to stop making errors and mistakes. They assist us to move from selfishness, which in every case is because we're suffering, in every case, it's because we're, uh, we are, our hearts are closed and we're not open to service. We, we think we have to take care of it ourselves. And our shurfus are there to open our hearts. They are there to guide us and steer us. They do that by communicating with our soul, which is connected to our ears. Our soul's ears and our ears are connected. Um, and they communicate with our soul. They bless our soul. Now, understand that your soul and you are superimposed for the most part. Uh, what I mean by the most part, meaning your soul can be elsewhere sometimes, but, but your soul and you look the same. And so when your shurfu, imagine Jesus was your shurfu, or Ganesha was your shurfu, or Buddha was your shurfu. Imagine a blessing from one of them. That would be the biggest blessing ever, right? And when they bless you, they're not blessing you physically. They're blessing your soul. What does that mean when they bless you? That means they are showering flowers of virtue on you. What does that mean? Well, heaven's virtue is like earth's money. Heaven's virtue clears karma. Earth's money makes life a little bit easier. So when a shurfu showers you with blessings, he is clearing spiritual debts that then impact your, your mind and your body. In other words, it impacts your suffering down here. So having a shurfu in your life is exceedingly, exceedingly important. How then do you connect to a shurfu and how then can you have uh, some of these blessings, some of these um, 
some of the values that come with being with a Sherfu. You have to, you, it's very difficult to have a dedicated, assigned Sherfu. There are many beings of light that come when you call them. If you grew up in India, you don't call Jesus unless you grew up in Christianity. You call Ganesha, you call Vishnu, you call uh, 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 you know, Ramtha, you call whoever is the deities of that realm and that region. You grew up in the, in the West, you call Jesus, you call Mother Mary. You grew up in the East, you call Bodhi, you call Kuan Yin, right? And other uh, Buddhas. But they all come to varying degrees. The purity of your heart, listen to this, very, very important. The purity of your heart, when you call one of them, is extremely relevant to their presence. Think of it like this. If you had a third or fourth rate cell phone company that is not, you know, your top of the line cell phone entities, then the sound is always kind of scrambled and staticky. You don't get very good reception in the mountains, right? But if you had a top-notch cell phone company, you paid a little bit more for them, but they work wherever you go. That's the same difference of a pure connection. If you're just like, oh, I'm suffering, oh, please come, Jesus, help me. How pure is your connection? Are you in a place of selfishness? Did you take responsibility? For where you're at did you ask forgiveness for the things that you may have done the purity of your heart is like a very clean high-powered 4 5g line straight to heaven when you have a pure heart and you are connecting with deep love and forgiveness with deep intent to not make the same mistakes again to learn your lessons and power through it and re and receive the wisdom the teachings when you not only in that moment but you walk the talk afterwards you go out and you serve you help others to be happier and healthier in whatever way it looks it can be smiling at somebody helps them to be happier and healthier but when you start walking the talk, clearing your path and being pure, what happens is sure foods of the light side, these higher beings, they want to be with you. You think they want to be around chalk on a chalkboard or people scratching their fingernails on a chalkboard? You think they like that sound? I don't like it. Do you like it? That is the energy if we are not pure. If we're not pure and we're calling them, they're not always going to come. They like being around high frequencies, frequencies that do not detract from their purity. They will serve all, but it doesn't mean they're going to be dedicated to you. They will help that person that's suffering. Absolutely, they will. But then they'll leave. A dedicated sheriff it was with you all the time. They sit over your head. Big difference. It's very, very hard to have a dedicated Shurfu. In order to get one, you either have to be exceedingly pure, communicate with them all the time. Not just ask, but give them great love, great admiration, great appreciation. Be very grateful filled to them all the time. Tell others about them to serve others but teach them to be grateful and pure as well that's one way in which they may come a little more often doesn't mean they're going to stick with you all the time the other way is by attending a retreat similar to what i did um, sure retreats are offered probably four or five times a year by master shah's top teachers the same ones that in the event 10 years ago they were able to see these Sherpas and tell me who mine was. I've had several Sherpas since then. Um, these same masters have now been given the authorities to ask these Sherpas to come from heaven and dedicate their lives to serve your soul journey. Uh, these are only offered three, four, maybe five times a year. 
you just have to go to MasterShot's website and keep an eye on the events because they're always changing around the world. You have to go to there's nine different centers. You have to just you know keep your eye on the ball. Uh, I don't know when one is right now. I think one just finished uh, in one of the locations, and there will be others. <clears throat> Maybe there's one now live. I really don't know. I'm not trying to sell those events. I didn't even have a plan to talk about uh, that aspect of it. Actually, it just comes out, so I tell you about it. But if you ever have that opportunity to join one of those retreats and you have to honor you have to you know pay for that opportunity to have a sure flu assigned for you what happens to that money well i'll tell you what happens there is a very special ancient process in which the money is returned back to heaven it needs to go back to that sure food to give them money how do you think they survive in heaven you think they they, they survive you know with nothing they have to, they have to have uh, a means of of uh, equality up there, a, a way of, of transferring virtue. Okay, you can't just give, 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 and, and have nothing to fill up your coffers, right? You pay off everyone's debts, your bank account will go empty. So, there is a way to return the cycle that uh, heaven gives to us. There's a way to return it to heaven. Ancient secrets teach this, not going to teach it here, not appropriate. Uh, but just know that if you are asked in by me as a master teacher, any of Master Shah's teachers, anyone in Master Shah's organization, if you are asked to spend money to receive a blessing of any kind, that blessing comes with virtue. The virtue clears your spiritual debts. The spiritual debts, when cleared, releases some or all of the suffering that you may be going through. And I doubt that you're going to complain if your suffering disappears because you had to pay a little bit for it. We don't complain when we go to the doctors or the chiropractors, but some people have a mindset about paying for something. So again, I divest. I shouldn't be going off on that tangent, but apparently it needed to be mentioned. If you attend a retreat, if you receive blessings from a master teacher or any of the students, be honored to honor, because it's a very rare thing that virtue is so easily released to wash away our blockages, our spiritual debts. Very rare indeed. Okay, I'm going to offer a flow now from a Shurfu. Um, I will ask one of my Shurfus to speak. Uh, maybe, well, I'll see who wants to speak. And then uh, we'll get a message from them. <coughs> so, dear heaven, Dear my beloved divine creator, dear my Sherfus, all the Sherfus in heaven, please choose a spokesperson, borrow my mouth, and offer additional wisdom about your service to humanity and how someone can further connect with you as appropriate. Thank you. How? This is Kuan Yin, Buddha of compassion. Each of you are spiritual beings currently at this moment. Each of your souls are actually serving other souls at this moment each of you in the soul world has as has been explained a team and some of you have dedicated shurfus i was about to say that I am a Shurfu for a few of you. And then what I know to be true is that Master Paul will be inundated with the question, did she mean me? Is she my dedicated Shurfu? So do not do that. There is attachment that need not be there. 
A Shurfu dedicates their life to serve you. This is a two-edged sword. Because when the Shurfu makes an agreement, it is written into the Akashic Records. And that means that your gains are acknowledged and written into their Akashic Record as well. The Shurfu receives the virtue for serving you unconditionally. <clears throat> but the other side of that sword is that if you fail, make mistakes, or go against the guidance and bring harm or suffering to others, this also is recorded in the Akashic Record. And this also impacts negatively the Shurfu. So as you can see, there is a great deal of responsibility that the Shurfu undertakes in agreeing to be there for you. Do you understand that your physical world teachers also operate in the same rules? For the words that come out of their mouth can be harmful or hurtful. And accordingly, they gain virtue or debt. So the physical world shurfu <clears throat> must become very cognizant and careful of everything they say and do because the impact to their soul journey and yours can be impacted substantially positively or negatively to have a dedicated shurfu is to agree at the level of soul to dedicate your life to accomplishing your soul's journey and this is where many unfortunately do not pass the tests for in the agreement to accomplish your soul journey, there is testing. The testing is nothing more than opportunities to remove ego attachments and the need to be right the testing can come in every form imaginable why then does testing happen and why does the shurfu and heaven cause this to occur <clears throat> the testing is an agreement you at the level of soul make the agreement to expand your soul journey, complete your growth. The testing is literally what is necessary to accomplish what you have asked. How do you become a pure vessel if you hold ego? How do you become a pure vessel if you have attachments? How do you become your highest self if you are always right and have the need to be seen? Testing hurts because it challenges these false ways of bringing yourself to life. Your Shurfu brings these changes to you in a way that you are able to manage them power through them release the blockages and accomplish 
the leveling up of each step of your soul journey. That is their responsibility. The reason it is difficult for the Shurfu as well is because some get lost and fail to pass their spiritual testing. They move away from love and trust and move towards anger, resentment, and separation. They move towards victim and away from love. It is difficult, yes, but it is not difficult if one views life from the perspective that my teacher, the Buddha, has shared. All life is suffering unless it is not. And it is only suffering if we see it as such. And it is not if we see it as opportunity. I love you all unconditionally. And I leave you with my blessings. This is the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Kuan Yin. So, a beautiful opportunity to receive a very powerful message from a Shurfu. Kuan Yin is an extraordinary being of light, and I'm sure she is a dedicated Shurfu to many, many souls, which means that she has a lot of responsibility, and it's not always easy to, to do that. A lot of people don't know who Kuan Yin is, and she's the Buddha that has the thousand arms, thousand eyes. And they don't realize, why did she receive those thousand arms, thousand eyes? Because she had such an open heart, she was literally crying to her teacher that she could not serve all the souls that were crying out for help. She was crying because she was not enough to help them all. Her teacher, seeing her open heart of purity, gave her 1,000 hands, 1,000 eyes to serve more. That is the story, the vague story behind who this uh, Buddha of compassion is. So she is an amazing Shurfu. So I hope that you have enjoyed this wisdom and this teaching today. I know some of you came in midway through this teaching or even through the flow that I just delivered. My encouragement to you is to go back to the beginning. There was a lot of wisdom here for you. <clears throat> I do individual soul readings. So if you wanted to have some individual guidance for your soul journey, uh, you can contact me through my website or through my email, asoulhealer.com. Uh, keep an eye on Kristen Rojas' posts. She is my right hand. She posts things for me. And you'll find that information to get a hold of me there. And... I also offer uh, extraordinary blessings. Um, they're actually healings, but we're required to call them blessings because only pharmaceutical medicine is allowed to heal in America. And as you can tell, I'm being sarcastic. I'm not a big fan of that law. So I offer blessings that could have extraordinary results if that's something that you're interested in. I also remind you to join the Dao self-healing program whole year 52 weeks of uh, twice a week wisdom and practices to bring healing to every aspect of your life you can get three months worth of wisdom and it's only a hundred you can learn more at my website asoulhealer.com it's right there on the first page recommend this course you can sign up anytime you don't miss anything whenever you come into it it's ongoing and it will bring massive change in a very positive way to your life. I thank all the beings of light who have come, Divine Tao Source, our beloved Creator. I thank Beloved Divine. I thank our Mother and Father Shurfus from this and all lifetimes. I thank our individual Heavens teams, guides, angels, and saints, and all the beings of light who have come. Deeply appreciate your wisdom. Thank you, Kuan Yin, for your flow. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for sharing. I look forward to serving you moving forward. Countless bow downs, countless bow downs, countless bow downs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Love you, love you, love you. All beings of light, please respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you on Thursday, three hours earlier than today. And if you're not sure when it is in your time zone, on my Facebook page, it lists the times right there at the top of the page. Bye-bye. We'll see you then.